Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to the continuation of the Youth Ministry course. Um, thank you for joining. I hope you had a good break. <clears throat> okay, um, let's continue uh, to chapter two. Uh, in chapter one, once again, just to quickly recap, we looked at um, who are the youth, um, how the world defines and describes a look at uh, the youth or a younger generation. And um, finally, we saw why does why is it important to have a youth ministry in your church? Okay, um, so from then we'll move on into the youth ministry. So now from chapter two, we'll begin to look at the youth ministry uh, aspect of it. Just a little bit of practical aspects um, of it. Okay, so um, second chapter titled "Youth Ministry with a Vision." Um, is it is it important to have a vision for? Sure, we need vision for our lives, but uh, but is it important to have a, a vision for the youth ministry in our context? Let's be very specific. And if so, uh, why do we need to have a vision? Definitely, I think uh, vision is very important for anything that is required in life. Uh, basically, the reason you can never know where you're going mm -hmm. until you literally plan where you are and where you want to go and what you will need along the way. Thank you. Right, thank you, Colin. So you will not know where you are going, and so therefore you will not be able to lead well. Okay, um, okay. I just again, this is a very fundamental, simple question. Uh, it's not a tricky question. Um, so, why is vision important for ministry in our context? Why is vision important for youth ministry? Um, I believe we are trying to lead the youth somewhere, uh, being being the leaders of youth. Uh, we want to uh, imprint some values and then uh, that's what we are trying to do, even being as a uh, leader. So I think uh, to lead them uh, towards Jesus or to Christ likeness, what, what is our vision, uh, it, it really matters. Okay, thank you. Vision is essentially why we do what we do. Okay, it keeps us focused on the primary mission, or else it will be like blind leading the blind. Okay, fantastic. Okay, it will be like blind leading the blind. Um, all right, and what else? Why? Why? Um, why is it? Why is it important? Please talk to me. Uh, is, if those. Lyndon, Zelatoli, Roslyn, Subashish, why is vision important? So what will happen to a ministry, a youth ministry, if it does not really have a vision? Say, you, you know, you have a youth ministry going on and then every Sunday or every Saturday um, every, or every Wednesday, whichever day you want to pick up, uh, you all are meeting, um, you're having, there's, there's, a, there's an event, there's a meeting called youth ministry. Um, so every week this has been going on for week after week, month after month, year after year. Um, so there's something happening, but Let's say that there is no vision. How is uh, how is that different? Pastor, you see, with no vision, mm -hmm. it is really complicated to define the roles of people, especially in what is happening in a given organization. For mm -hmm. instance, if uh, 
we really don't know what the vision is. Let's just even narrow it to a theme of the day, for instance, at church. If uh, you don't even have like a theme of the day for the preaching or what and what, you find that the people who are there, they will be making different dances. Some are dancing calypso, others are dancing culture, others are dancing. But if there is a vision, people will know that we are supposed to focus on this and this is where we're going. Without which it would hardly be organized. It will look like a hodgepodge, if I may say. Sure, Collins. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, very clear. <laughs> uh, okay. But uh, as Zalatoli says, uh, it will not be successful and it will fade away in due season. It will not be successful and it will fade away in due season. Okay. But it's still, my question still remains. Okay, what about a youth ministry of a church um, that meets week after week, month after month, year after year? Um, you know, they've been doing things, for example, they've been meeting. Uh, do you believe that those meetings can still happen if there is no vision? Do you believe or? Do you think that the youth meetings will can still happen if there are if there is no vision, so to speak? Yes, it can still happen. Okay, and so uh, then, why is vision important? It's still happening, no? Vision will give direction. Will give direction. Will give purpose to, for for meeting. It will give purpose for the meeting, okay? It will give direction, okay? Thank you. This is wonderful. It says I'm getting so many different answers for a simple fundamental question uh, that we need to think about, right? Uh, because, um, yeah, I mean, I've seen churches where meetings happen week after week, month after month, year after year, meetings happen. Uh, that means there's something happening. But uh, there is no set vision. Um, that makes me ask, why should there be vision? OK, without vision, they will not know why they exist. Oh, you, OK. All right, Jafina, go ahead. Yeah. I'm just sharing my, my experience. I, I was part of, like, in my church, we do meet, like, back in my hometown, we do meet every week. Uh, the youth meets, we gather, uh, we speak on various topics, uh, but but we don't have any uh, specific vision or, yeah, we just don't know why we are gathering sometimes. We just come, come together, just speak about random things, and whatever the youth leader they want to talk about it's not like they're not teaching from the bible though they do take the word they do teach from it uh but yeah it, it just the, i think sometimes vision gives a motive for a youth to come and join uh you know some of the youth they just run away once the church is over because <laughs> they just feel like it's a normal meeting that happens uh, every every week uh, they don't feel like there is a specific reason uh, for them to join it so i think if you have a vision uh, it will give the motive for the youth uh, to join uh, okay this is what i'm gonna learn this is uh, what we are trying to reach uh, maybe i should try this out uh, or else there is no definite uh, motive for like i'm just saying from the perspective of the youth uh, for them to come uh, to just sit over there and and yeah they have today's youth have various things to do <laughs> if not a youth meeting they, they have so many options uh, to just uh, spend out their time and but i think if we have a vision if we let them know what we are really uh, trying to focus on or, or accomplish the reason and the values behind it uh, might uh, make them think uh, and and might make give them that motive and desire to to just join in yeah yeah thank you Jeffina. i think one what was uh one interesting thing is that, uh, you know, 
yes, meetings happen, and they are also teaching from the Bible. So, uh, you know, the teachings are happening from the Bible, uh, you know, biblical topics, uh, but not not everybody necessarily knows the why. <laughs> Isn't it? Uh, and if someone if someone were to ask uh, a person who's attending these youth meetings, but it does not, they, which does not really have a vision, so to speak, uh, if you were to ask that person as to, hey, why are you going to this youth meeting? They would not necessarily know how to answer that question, or they would not know why. Their why the, the way they might answer this is, uh, you know, because I've been going to this for months, for weeks, I'm part of this church. Um, you know, setup happens before the youth meeting. So, you know, I stay back for the youth meeting because I'm part of the setup team. And so, you know, <laughs> uh, you get what I'm saying, right? Okay. So we need to identify the needs of the youth and try to address those from a biblical context. Yeah. So uh, I, I feel like there is there are more answers to this question among us that we can discuss. We can have a separate group discussion like we do with youth meetings. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure there are most because I'd I'd love to hear from all of you on this very fundamental, simple question: as why is vision important? Because we can continue to do things without any vision in life. So why is it important for in our context? A vision important for youth ministry. And if you cannot answer, if we or if you as leader cannot answer this question or cannot come up with this and if this is not your first question um, that means you are in very serious trouble um, as a leader okay um, all right so youth meeting can still happen every week but whether or not the youth is uh, getting benefited by it depends on their growth and also when we see the youth that was part of the group is now able to lead other youth with an example uh, there we get an answer, right? So uh, this current generation able to lead the next generation uh, That will happen if their why is strong. So if there is a vision we see more youth leaders standing in that group and If there is no vision then the youth leader will be the only person leading the group with no leaders standing So vision is important to raise leaders or else it will be only outgoing meeting only preaching. Okay All right Okay, so uh, we are all wonderful people. We are all good people, God's children. We all understand the importance of vision, <laughs> right? Uh, I love this image of, uh, you know, a ministry without a vision necessarily is is like a, it's like running on a treadmill, right? Uh, you know, you're running. I mean, there's some motion happening, but there's really no momentum. Right. There's no progress, so to speak. You're, we're very much in the same place. Now, we can be in the same place and we can get a lot of things done. Just like on the treadmill, you're running, um, you're sweating, uh, you're losing some calories and all of that. So work is getting done. But the question is, is there progress? Is there growth happening? Right, Like what Rosalind has just mentioned, when the next generation comes, um, do they know what is happening and the purpose and why it's happening? Right? Or even the current generation, if you were to pull a youth from a youth meeting and ask them, why are you attending this youth meeting, do they have a strong answer to uh, to answer your question as to why? Okay, and so uh, youth, the vision is important, and I think uh, we've, we've established that point very well. And uh, when I was appointed as the youth pastor at APC, um, I have... I had zero experience of being a pastor, let alone youth pastor, and uh, I had zero experience with full-time ministry, um, so to speak, and 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 I, I didn't want anything to do with young people. I, I had a heart for them. I loved them. Uh, love is a strong word. <laughs> uh, I had a heart for them, for the young people, uh, because somewhere I understood that okay, you know. Uh, as a young person, I was re uh, as I was rejected by the church. I was labeled as a rebellious, uh, stubborn, short, uh, short-tempered, uh, all of those things. And how I was not accepted for the person that I was. I was very sad that okay, the church did not see, uh, take time 
to just understand me a little better and was very quick to label me and um, sideline me. Um, and so because of that, those experiences, uh, I always had a heart for young people to accept them as they are and not be quick to judge. But it wasn't so big that I wanted to pastor them. Uh, right? But when this opportunity came to uh, lead the youth of All People's Church, um, eventually I arrived at a point saying, OK, you know, Lord, what next? Uh, you know, why? Uh, you know, what is the purpose? What should be the purpose? Uh, what should be the vision? Uh, what is my role in it? Uh, do I have a vision for young people? I have nothing. I have zero experience as a pastor. I, I have zero experience as a youth pastor. And I have no connection with uh, the young people of the church uh, because uh, I had no connection. Uh, so what do I do? That was my question. Like, you know, Lord, what do I do? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, you know, I think it, it's it's an awesome place to be at from the hindsight you know at that time it was not great but it was very overwhelming um, and so that question uh, lead me to uh, you know to okay put a vision or a purpose of a youth ministry together right and uh, again I'm sharing these uh, uh, bits from my experience okay and uh, so uh, we'll see what we can take away from this. Okay, are, are, are you guys doing all right? Are you with me? Um, okay. okay, cool, thanks. So um, I was led to two different verses from the Bible when I, when I had this question um, as to okay, what should be the purpose, what should be the vision of the youth ministry thing? Now, where do we build? How do we build this? Where do we go from uh, the baton that was passed on to me? How do I take it and run? Um, should I run in the same place or should I go forward and where do I go? How do I go? What should I do? How do we take, how do we go on as a journey, you know, as a team forward? Um, so God in his grace and in his mercy, in his wisdom, um, you know, he took me to these two scriptures uh, and which is the great commandment as we know it, Matthew 22, 37, 40. Uh, you know, some of the Pharisees or the teachers of the law asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment according to you? And Jesus answered saying, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, all, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. All the law and prophets. Now, again, remember, this is during Jesus' time, there was no New Testament. Okay, And so uh, when he says all the law and the prophets, now here he's quoting the entire Old Testament. Jesus is saying, everything hangs on these two commandments. Uh, from, from the Torah to the writings and the prophets, all of that is this. The fundamental point is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then love your neighbor as yourself okay so that was verse one and then verse two which uh, uh which is which is from matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and 20 we all know this which is the great suggestion oh sorry it's the great commission it's not a suggestion it says therefore uh, go and make disciples of all nations uh, baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Okay, so, um, and then from these two key scriptures, uh, the what I would, what I can call it as five different pillars or something, uh, you know, kind of uh, stood out and it made sense to me, right? And, um, and now again, all of these points, uh, which I, when I began to start studying about youth ministry uh, in general is, and there are a lot of resources that was available. Internet was still big in 2018. <laughs> if you Google search, okay, what vision do I need to have for youth ministry? 
uh, you will get uh, everybody else's vision, right? Um, and there are so many resources out there, which was out there, and uh, we still need to have wisdom and guidance from the Holy Spirit to understand which would be the right one for your context, okay? So it's one thing to have knowledge, and it's another thing to have wisdom. Wisdom is how you apply the knowledge that you have. So that's the basic thing, distinction, isn't it? And so there was, when I started researching about youth ministry, I started on uh, beginning to understand, okay, how to lead the youth, uh, the vision and whatnot. So from these two scriptures, uh, you know, there were these five things that stood out. So love the Lord your God with all your heart is can simply be translated as worship. That's what worship is. At the core of it is love, right? Why we worship uh, and all of that, it boils down to that one word called love. So loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength is worship. Love your neighbor as yourself is ministry. That means to serve. Ministry, at, what is the uh, core meaning of the word ministry? Is to be a cup bearer. That's what it is, right? To serve. Um, that's what a minister is supposed to do a call or call to do is to serve the people serve the society etc okay and then go and make disciples evangelism go and make disciples share the good news and baptizing them it simply means bringing them in okay that is bring them into this fellowship and then doesn't stop there teaching them to obey that is discipleship okay so from these two scriptures suddenly there was worship there was ministry there was evangelism there was fellowship and then there was discipleship and all of a sudden the why or my vision was gaining some clarity okay hey all right. Okay. So I understand this, you know, this worship, there's uh, ministry needs to happen, evangelism, baptizing them, fellowship needs to be there, discipleship needs to be there. Okay. Uh, and I was beginning to gain some clarity on this. Okay. Let me just uh, share an image uh, just to show as to why it's uh, important to have some sort of clarity or uh, vision for youth ministry. So. Okay, I hope you can all uh, see this image. I'm just going to try and zoom in just a little bit if I can. Okay, there we go. Okay, whoopsie. All right. Three types of youth groups, uh, of the many groups that there can be. Um, this one kind of made sense. So it is every church, every youth ministry of every church has a potential to be either one of these groups. Okay, so on top you see the drop in center, let me entertain you, and then the Bible focus. So these are the three different types of youth groups any church can have. Okay. Um, what are the aims of it? First one, uh, the drop in center is get kids off the street, give kids something to do, provide a safe environment that is a drug and alcohol free, um, social welfare focus, counsel and skill young people. Um, culturally comfortable often uh, fitness and sports um, computer gaming lounging workshops okay example PCYC a local council okay perceived as a hangout place an access point for services why because you you what, what's the why there of the first group because you care about disadvantaged kids and don't want them to get up to mischief or miss life opportunities. So there is an element of care in this first group, right? You care, we care for them, right? Like we like we saw some time ago. Um, we need to care. But how it's perceived as? It's perceived as the, a hangout place, right? Um, OK, so let's move on to the next one. Let me entertain you kind of a group. What is its aim? Uh, a fun alternative for unhelpful social activities. Get kids off the street, provide a safe environment, uh, culturally comfortable, a fun alternative. 
right? Uh, often what, what happens there is crazy games, theme nights, 70s night, whatnot, you know, full on, uh, disco nights, retro nights, uh, excursions, constant excursions, uh, trips, often trips, um, movies, movie night, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, movie nights are fine, by the way, in my opinion. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So, example: blue light disco, youth council activities, student-run uh, okay, youth church, youth groups. Okay, uh, perceived as fun and games, or cheap and lame. <laughs> uh, why? Because you like organizing and running events. What's the why uh, of the second group? Is we love organizing uh, and we love running events, camps, constant camps, every month on camp. Okay, you want kids to have fun without drugs, alcohol, trouble, or bad influence. So it's like a stark uh, opposite to the first group that we saw. Was it's not uh, it did not necessarily be very boring, but now there's some fun activities. Okay. Finally, we have the Bible-focused youth ministry group. Okay, uh, so here, what, what are the aims? You would teach and study the Bible, be a Christian community. Um, if possible, we'll, uh, we'll look at, we'll do a little bit of study on the word community itself later on. So teach and study the Bible, be Christian community, uh, live out the values of Jesus, engage real life with real Jesus, countercultural. Okay, the Bible based, a Bible focused youth group will be countercultural. That means they are not influenced by the pop culture of, uh, of what's happening in and around them. Okay, so often Bible study groups and or talk, they have Bible games. Yes, there are Bible games available. Okay, <laughs> uh, half the youth ministry runs on them, guys. So, sharing life with others, lots of Jesus. Um, Example, church youth groups, uh, perceived as, it can be perceived as boring or odd, odd. Um, oh, youth group, Ooh, I don't want to be part of it. You know, they talk too much about Bible and Jesus. Um, it's not for me. You know, unattractive for outsiders, churchy group. Um, why? Because, so what's the why of this, this Bible focus group? Because you want kids to know and trust Jesus and adopt his values. Because you believe this can only happen by God's word. You want kids to do life with Jesus. So, um, I'm just going to stop sharing that now. Um, so, uh, it was very clear that, okay, this image also in my initial days uh, helped me that, okay, hey, you know, uh, a certain youth group can be perceived as this. Now that we can be a youth group, and by the way, I have been part of um, the second, the middle one, and the third one, um, which is extreme fun, and it was just fun, 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 and very little of the Bible, uh, you know, for the namesake of uh, you know, it's like five minutes devotional, and uh, let's move on. Um, so. I've been part of both of them. So uh, this image was also very helpful in terms of how uh, I need to have a vision for young people. OK, this is how the youth ministry at APC need to look at. This is how it needs to be perceived as. It has to be Bible focused. We're going to talk a lot about Jesus, do a lot of Bible studies, um, you know, group talks and whatnot. And at the same time, we're going to try and incorporate the fun element of it. There's nothing wrong in having fun, isn't it? Um, so talk about camps, games, um, yeah, movie night. We never did one, but you know, uh, I wanted to have. Uh, I I can only imagine movie night. It was uh, it was a nice movie on forgiveness. But um, all of that uh, helped me kind of uh, plan for the youth ministry and have a vision for a youth ministry at APC. And uh, with this five pillars, so to speak, was also very helpful, like worship, ministry, evangelism, fellowship, and discipleship. Right? Um, and so in your notes, you will see that uh, each point has sub points, like in worship, you know, uh, 
you talk about celebrating God's presence, honoring Him with our lifestyles, uh, praying, hearing the word, giving, baptizing, meditating, communion, etc. Ministry was about serving one another. I think in uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, it says, We express our love to God in how we serve one another. In, in other words, that when we serve each other, we are telling God that we love Him. Right, and that's the second part of the commandment: is love your neighbor as yourself, isn't it? So meet meeting needs with love, and encouraging our young people to serve in the church. Okay, and uh, there's a certain journey of how you would, uh, you know, disciple a young people. Right, I'm um, just putting that in the chat section. So if someone is new or if they are just graduating from children's church uh, and coming into teen church, teens fellowship and then youth fellowship, uh, you know, we continue to teach them you know, in uh, the God's truth, isn't it? Uh, we do continue to teach them about the foundations. Uh, at the APC, we have foundations. It, it addresses all, all the foundational topics such as faith, worship, prayer, uh, Holy Spirit, etc. So we teach them about the foundational truths, and then we teach them about the spiritual disciplines. Uh, that's as a sec as a second point in the discipleship journey is how to spend time in personal prayer, regular in person, and how to develop uh, a discipline of spiritual life, such as fasting, uh, etc. Right? And then what is very important is that you equip the individuals to serve. You don't just teach them to uh, come and uh, sit, warm the chairs, and go. Uh, but you tell them, it's like, hey, there are so many of these volunteering teams that you can be part of. Uh, you know, you can serve, you can minister to one another, right? As you love yourself, that's what ministry is all about, isn't it? So, um, you we teach the young people about worship. We teach them about the importance of ministry, about to serve, and then it's also important that we teach them on evangelism. Evangelism is another way how a church grows, how a ministry grows. It is not enough that I tell them, OK, I want you to share about Jesus in your schools, in your colleges, in your workplaces. The next question is going to be the obvious one. How do I share it? Right? And so you start planning a program or a, an event uh, on uh, how we can address that question. OK, I want you to share about Jesus, why Jesus, and how you can share about Jesus. OK, so evangelism was another thing. Uh, and then fellowship, of course, the, uh, you know, we come together, we have fun, food, and fellowship. That's the three famous Fs, isn't it? We have fun, we have food, we have fellowship. Uh, that's also important. And then finally, discipleship. You're allowing them to uh, grow. You're, we're going on a journey. Um, so uh, what we used to do as youth ministry is um, in the beginning of the year, once as a pastor, as a leader, this was clear for me. Uh, I began to meet with my core team. Uh, you know, I had... 12 to 15 member core team who was helping me with the organizational aspect and the logistical part of it, the spiritual aspects of the youth ministry. I began sharing these points with them. Why it's important, now we can talk about it in a, in a later chapter, is if you have a team, it's important that you share your vision with the team. And now once the team has understood your vision, it becomes very easy for them to do uh, what they are doing are you with me right and so once i had this down uh it i didn't want this vision to be secret and so every january we will have a, a, a youth meeting called youth connect where we would have young people from all the locations uh, apc had fi has five locations uh come and attend this meeting and it would be uh, a time of sure you know it's basically a vision casting meeting right if you if you worked in a corporate you know you know that uh, there's this vision casting program or an event that happens isn't it and so there was this vision casting meeting that would happen in january where all the youth would come and i will take them through all of these points this is the vision of 
APC's youth ministry. This is the purpose, and this is why we exist. And so, you know, take them through these two verses, great commandment, great commission, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, these five pillars, worship, ministry, evangelism, fellowship, and discipleship. Uh, and tell them, okay, this is what we are all about. Another thing that we did in this meeting is I did not just present that okay these are the five pillars, and um, you know I also we also presented them the platforms that is available currently in the church that they can be part of. So for example, worship, uh, you know, we'll share with the young people saying okay, you can be part of the worship team. There are worship nights that happen in church. Encourage them to come and be part of it where they can grow as worshippers. And then ministry, you, we present to them 19 different teams that uh, serve to make one Sunday service happen. This is at APC. Okay, um, so if you didn't know, at APC we have 19 different team volunteering teams work together that make to make one Sunday happen. From the car parking team to the children's team, uh, children ministry to the youth ministry, uh, worship team, setup team, etc., uh, etc., et uh, ushering team. Uh, all of that and you present to them saying okay these are all the platforms that's available for you to minister to serve one another and not just to be so but to serve right and then evangelism tell them that okay there are these mission trips that happen uh, you know where you can go out and uh, you know minister to uh, a new group of people and then there are these compass, uh, sorry, a, a group that goes on to these college campuses or school campuses where you can share about Jesus. So you have a platform for evangelism and discipleship. There's this uh, weekly school, uh, weekend school of ministry that happens where you can go and be equipped. So, uh, you, you know, we're not just presenting that, okay, there are these five pillars, you know, five things that we are, that's what we are all about. It's not, we're not just sharing that this is what's there, but you are also presenting the platform that's available for them to be. Uh, involved in five of these uh, uh, categories, so to speak. Okay, so it, it became very easy. And once this was simple for me, uh, we had to come up with a purpose statement because why not? Right? And so if you look at the notes, if you look at, uh, you know, uh, we wanted to come up with a purpose statement. I'm at the bottom of page nine, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So the vision is kind of clear, but to make it just a little bit more simpler, uh, how can we make it? It's it's still youth ministry, isn't it? We need to be a little bit uh, exciting and uh, uh, catchy or trendy, so to speak. So uh, we wanted to come up with a purpose statement. Uh, the idea of this purpose statement um, was to keep it simple, to make keep it meaningful. Um, it should be action oriented. That means there has to be a call, right? And it should be compelling. So, um, this is an exercise for you, uh, you know, for yourself is uh, if you were leading a youth ministry, what will be your vision? And you can come up with your own purpose statement and you can um, share it with me in the stream section. Okay. But uh, with what we had, how did we work? Uh, this out. We started looking at alternate words or synonyms for all the five words that we have. Okay, so worship can be, we can use the word exalt, passion, offer, you know, this is just examples, right? Fellowship, you have enjoy, encourage, care, evangelism, you have expose, spread, reach, discipleship, Synonyms are equip, share, develop, ministries, experience, service, serving, etc. So we kind of uh, filtered some of um, the synonym words for all those five uh, pillars. And then we began to uh, make a purpose statement. And uh, and at the bottom of uh, in page 10, you will see the words that are highlighted in red uh, is where we've managed to you know bring in this aspect of worship fellowship evangelism discipleship and ministry into the scene okay so what was our final purpose statement apc youth ministry exists to equip and empower so you have uh, discipleship uh, you know mentioned that so you 
we exist to disciple young people instead of just saying disciple we're there to equip and empower to become true worshipers right of jesus who love people that is ministry okay loving is what because you love your love your neighbor as yourself so ministry so love people and spread his love evangelism uh, his love in the city of bangalore and the nation of india now it was not it was also very important that we come up with a purpose statement that is not alien to uh, or so foreign to the vision of our church it had to go in line right in most cases what happens in a church is that a church has its own vision uh, and the youth ministry has its own vision that's going you know in another direction but that's not what we wanted to do we wanted to uh, complement or be coherent or cohesive with the vision of the church of vision of the senior pastor right to be a salt and light in the city of bangalore etc and so just flip it up a little bit and say okay apc's youth ministry exists to equip empower become true worshipers love jesus spread his love in the city of bangalore and the nation of india Okay, so that's what we came up with, and that is the vision that uh, we ended up sharing with the core team and also with the rest of the youth. And so every youth of APC knew this is what we were about. This is our vision. This is who we are. We're going to be Bible-focused, uh, and yet we're going to have fun and, and whatnot. Right? We are going to be equipped in the area of worship, evangelism, ministry, discipleship, and fellowship. Okay? Um, so this is how we function uh, at, um, at APC. Now the youth ministry is uh, still looking the same, uh, but because we have a new youth pastor, but it's uh, but they're growing in the same similar direction. Okay, any thoughts or questions, guys? I had one incredible uh, team member who's uh, part of this class and who's pastoring a church in Bangalore. John Paul <laughs> was an amazing youth leader, I should say. OK, I guess. Uh, you've understood it all so uh you know take what you want to from this chapter and make it your own and see how this can this will be helpful in your setting in your context uh, to um, having a vision and the importance of it okay so if there are no questions we can end this session right now uh, and meet again next week All right. Well, thank you for joining. Um, take care. God bless you. I will see you again next week. Okay. Bye.